Hello and welcome back. Today I am continuing my user review of the Erica Synth Sample Drum. I will be covering the onboard effects, CV mapping, performance mode, saving projects, and global settings. Along the way I'll try a couple of interesting experiments using the features covered. Be sure to hang around for the end of the video where I'll share my final thoughts. Since part 1 of this review, firmware version 1.8 has been released. Keep in mind, firmware updates for this module are still coming. I have uploaded version 1.8 to my module for the remainder of this review. The sample drum has some onboard effects, reverb, delaying, bit crusher, low pass or high pass filters, wave folder, and overdrive distortion. Only one of the effects can be chosen at a time for each of the two playback channels. There are exactly three parameters for each effect. One of them will always be mix amount. So they're not going to be very sophisticated. The delay cannot synchronize to incoming triggers or anything fancy. But as you will see later on, effect parameters can be mapped to the CV inputs, which buys them a lot of street cred. You can use three incoming control voltages to change sample playback parameters on the fly, per channel. This is perhaps the sample drum's single most powerful feature. To emphasize the power of control voltage manipulation, let's survey all of these assignable CV parameters. CV mapping is nothing short of a fully loaded buffet of CVs from which we can pick and choose three of them to assign to the three CV jacks. The tuning of the sample, the sample playback mode, the sample itself can be changed to another sample, the start point of the sample, the end point of the sample, and the loop playback mode, all of the envelope parameters including the attack and decay shape, amplitude level and range, that means you can use your own CVs as a VCA, slice index, step, and reset. Reset just means it goes back to the first slice. Finally, the effects type and all effects parameters. So the sample I was playing at the beginning of this video was using CV to change not only the loop start and endpoints, but also the loop playback direction. With all this power, the only real limiting factor is you can only have three parameters that can be assigned to a CV at a time. But as you will see, there's even a way around that as well. Behold, little control voltage oscilloscopes show you what your incoming CVs are doing. How cute is that? So how about we sample an oscillator waveform, like a sawtooth, and map one of the CVs to control pitch using volts per octave. I've taken one sample, Note A3, from an Alpha Juno 1. Once it's loaded on the module, make sure it's looping smoothly there. We'll need the envelope so we don't hear the endless loop. Now I'll map CV1 to sample tuning. Holding the shift button, I'll make sure it's volt per octave. Now let's see what happens when I use a BeatStep Pro to send CV and gate. When I play the lowest note, it's starting with the A3. So I'll go to the sample page and change the initial frequency to A1. Now it's sounding pretty good. Nothing really stops you from making a wavetable either. You could load up to 64 samples in a single channel, then map something like an LFO to the CV input to scan through the table of samples. Speaking of LFOs, I wonder if the firmware has any room left for an onboard LFO. Seems like that would come in handy in a pinch. I mean, we already have an amplitude envelope. Real quickly, performance mode is simply a way to see what both of your channels are doing all at once. And... It gives you three more assignable parameters per channel that you can manually tweak using the knobs while the module is playing back your samples. 
This is in addition to whatever your CV jacks are already doing. You can assign any parameters already mentioned. You can even assign a parameter that is already assigned by CV mapping. Before we go any further, you can spend quite a bit of time getting things set up the way you like. Every time we boot the module, we don't want to manually load a bunch of samples, then slice them, and set loot points, and configure our effects. Once we've done all those things, there's a way to remember what we have done. It's called a project. We can save the selected channel as a project, or we can choose to save both channels in the same project. That way, when we boot the module, we just go to the project page, load our project back in, and it remembers all of the loop points, slice points, start, end, effects, CV mappings, the whole shebang. As your project changes and evolves, you can save over your work by holding the shift button and choosing overwrite. All right, now we have all those topics covered, let's get real. I said before, the sample drum isn't going to handle sophisticated, layered, multi-sample instruments like velocity-sensitive pianos and such. But say you used a funky old vintage synth in your song for bass, and you don't want to lug around said vintage synth out on the road with you. You know, perhaps some reliability issues there. So what about loading some synth samples into the sample drum? and using CV to change the samples, more like a monophonic instrument. I've taken 13 bass samples from a Korg 700S and loaded them into the sample drum in order from C1, C sharp 1, etc. on up to C2. And I'll map CV1 to change the sample. Holding the shift button, I'll make sure it's volt per octave. This time, the BeatStep Pro CV is changing the actual sample that gets played back, with each gate trigger played. Unfortunately, something is off. The trigger and pitch CV hit the module at the same time, so not enough time for the module to switch the sample correctly. Not to panic, we just need to look into global settings for the answer. As we continue our example of changing samples using CV, the astute firmware coders at Erica Synths have anticipated these things. Going into global settings under the general page, there is a delay for each of the triggers. What we need is just enough delay for the sample to switch before it gets a trigger. After a little bit of experimenting, 4 milliseconds seems to do the trick. If you're happy with these results, be sure to save it as a project. While on the general page, you can also turn on the auto load feature, which will do just that. Automatically load your last project when you boot the module. Is your module not loud enough? The output page lets you boost or attenuate the output levels. The display page lets you dim the display to your liking. I've got mine set to 30% because, well, OLED displays have a sort of reputation for burn-in residual images. I don't know, maybe things have gotten better with regard to that. Perhaps what we really need is a screensaver? There it is. The sample drum can be a bridge between your DAW or hardware sampling world and your Euroax system. The sample drum really isn't a sample editor processor, yet. I don't know how much firmware space is still available for updates. While there are minimal features on the sample recording page like start and end trim, it really can't do processing like normalization and sample rate conversion. Not yet, anyway. You'll need your outboard computer app to handle those things for you. Nothing is going to beat your computer for sample recording and processing. But when your pre-recorded audio loops are outboard ready, the sample drum is a deeply compelling tool for deploying them from your modular. The sample drum is very engaging as a creative tool and makes it an absolute delight for techno, acid house, glitch, and far out ambient excursions. I'm getting on with the workflow quite a bit. It's a breeze. There are tons of performance features you wouldn't expect. Effects, CV mapping, 
manual performance control, envelopes. It can reliably substitute your favorite patch from a cranky old monophonic synth while you're on the road. <laughs> the sample making process isn't for everyone. It can get a bit tedious and time consuming, but extremely rewarding as well. The sample drum already seems an indispensable piece of my system. It's a looping, slicing animal that rocks the block. That's all the time I have for today. So thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.